The intersection between homelessness, mental health, and criminal justice system is so interwoven, it's very difficult to unpack. Um, there's the role of childhood trauma, exposure to violence and substance abuse and addiction. So a lot of times when youth and children are experiencing trauma and homelessness as, um, as youth, then they're much more likely to experience homelessness as an adult. Um, a lot of times these um, children are born into families, so there's generations of poverty, generations of disadvantage, and um, they may not have had access to treatment, um, so then they're now acting out, um, they get labeled, they may be bullied in school, and then so in response to stress and um, maybe trauma that they're experiencing in, at home as well, um, they may start becoming violent and, and um, acting out and getting in trouble in school and then that, that may lead to more serious charges as they grow older. He lived in a small southern town in Alabama and then ended up moving here. Um, and so he suffered from depression. Um, he had a history of addiction. So prior, before I met him, it was a coke addiction. And then when I met him, it was alcohol. And I did not understand addiction at all. I had, yeah. I did not understand it. Um, and so I was learning about it as I was in this relationship. And as a 19, 20 year old college kid, I am watching this person that I loved become homeless. So I want to give you an example of policy that we did see this past legislative session that was the intersection of education and criminal justice. Um, Senate Bill 15, it was a school safety bill and it was intended to address school shootings and terrorism or the possibility of it. And so what it did was it required schools to come up with a safety plan and coordinate with Homeland Security on what happens in said scenarios. But there was a second provision of the bill which was incredibly dangerous for kids, which is mandatory police reporting. And so the clause said, if there's reasonable suspicion of uh, criminal activity that the school coordinator, who would be maybe the principal, has to by law call law enforcement. So that was a bill in which um, you could see how a kid who, um, suffers from mental health issues or um, has a, a disability um, where it would manifest into behavioral problems or even like you said, if somebody has Tourette's and it's not a controllable um, disability, it could be mistaken for behavioral issues. Or they get funneled into the, the juvenile justice or criminal justice system and could end up on the streets. When you think about a pipeline to homelessness or a pathway to homelessness, a lot of times it boils down to just a lack of resources and a lack of support. A lot of these kids that become homeless um, may have been in foster care, may have been um, abandoned by their family. They have very, very little support. It's amazing to see adults who come into my office who are seeking treatment for depression, anxiety, or a variety of mood disorders who are homeless 
and when you start asking them about their social support, their social network, um, and it's little to none. I mean, they may have some distant relative that they may know of, but then they may not have a good relationship with. And so a lot of times it just boils down to them not having people who they can count on, who can support them. Um, so then they may have trouble finding jobs because of their mental health problems. They may have trouble um, passing drug screens because they're using substances to deal with their mental health issues. And all of this becomes a, a, a cycle where they cannot get the support that they need. They can't support themselves. They can't find work. They can't sustain work. And it leads them to, to living on the streets and being on their own. When you start looking at solutions, we have to look at um, supportive housing. Um, we have to consider how can we house people because if we're giving housing, you know, that's just a pathway to health care, really, it's where they can um, live longer. And uh, I feel like there's just needs to be more awareness of these complex intersections and relationships between homelessness, substance abuse, um, incarceration and, and mental health.